God says, if one is a man, then the man shall rule over the, wo the woman. The woman shall desire one who rules over her. That should tell us that the way we are both cut out, the way a man and a woman are cut out, it is so different that he, when you find a woman who is ruling a man, something is out of place. And when you find a man who is longing for a woman who will rule over him, something is out of place. No, you find a woman who is longing for a man who will be doing what she wants to be done all the time. Then you know a witch in the making, a wizard. Say that me, I cannot just marry pastor. I want to, these are the qualities I want for a husband. He must listen to me. He must follow what I say. If I say we are going this way, we go. He must do what I want him to do. He must pamper me. He must love me. He must bow down to me. You are just saying I'm a wizard. <laughs> pastor, I'm a wizard. Every time you say things that I don't want a man who will tell me what to do. You are going against an ordained institution. Women were not born and were not created by divine arrangement to be telling the man what to do. So if you are dating a man today that you have to remind him to shave his beards, say, ah, you can't shave your beards. Here is the money. Say, eh, I, I didn't even see it. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Tomorrow you remind him, you know you have not seen your mom in a long time. I heard your mom is sick. Really? Eh, I don't have money. Okay, take, here is the money. Go and see your mom. Eh, eh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Another time you tell him, what are you wearing? Look at your shoes. Hey, hey, sorry, sorry. Oh, and he has big medical terminologies. Then you say, Pastor, don't look at him like that. He's a gifted man of God. By the time I now marry him and he becomes a medical doctor, you'll admire him. The tendencies you are seeing, they are not the tendencies of a man. <laughs> are you getting my construction? Why? From the word of God. So that means, child of God, that as we begin the journey of dating or you're planning to marry someone there are certain things if very deep consideration which means if you look at a woman who is behaving differently from what i'm saying it should make you question what is this what is happening and if you find a man who is behaving contrary you should be able to ask early enough what is this so what does it mean? Uh, we are cut out differently. Tell a neighbor we are cut out differently. If a man is behaving in a different way, it should be questioned. If you don't, you are going to live with it. He could be a man and he is a woman in the man. It can be a woman and he's a man in the woman. So if you don't deal with these things, there are obvious repercussions that are coming. He shall rule over you. Now, that means, child of God, when you begin to relate with any man, you begin to relate with anybody called a man, and the goal and the vision and the objective is we want to get married. There are tendencies that must be in place. The opposite must not be the case. There are tendencies that must naturally be in place. Not all of them may be there. But at least three quarter must be there. Not forgetting there are things that are also developed in marriage. There is a notion, there is something that people say. You know the problem with man is ego. Now, it is a, raw, it is a misplaced word. It is not ego. It's not ego. Man, the male, the word man now, I'll use it to symbolize male. The male is naturally wired by God to be in charge of affairs. And anything that contradicts their being in charge, they fight it. And then women interpret it as ego. It is not ego. It is that tendency it is something that originates in God. No matter how rich a woman is, there is no woman that is so rich that the husband will be bowing, she gives the husband money, she does everything for the husband, and she will feel happy on the inside. Unless again, something is out of place with the woman herself. Why? 
women were not born to be like that. Not actually born, were not created by God to be like that. Now, when I'm dating a man or a brother, you should be able to look at someone's tendencies to be in control. Now, there is good control and there is bad control. Bad control is what we call manipulation, where someone wants to control the wrong way. Um, he has not married you and he's telling you, go and get the loan, bring it to me. You are not comfortable with it. You are doing it against your will. Something tells you I haven't married him. I should not be doing this. And you see a control now that is to the extreme. A control that is now manipulation. If control is, uh, uh, goes out of bounds, it becomes manipulation. Now, manipulation is not of God. But there is what we call natural control. The expected and understandable tendency to have things under control. If you are dating a man that that is none of his business, you may need to reanalyze him again. So, that tendency to want some level of recognition. A man can be so born again, so humble, but anybody you talk to very sincerely, Anybody that is in your life, people can be in our lives because of where we work. They are our workmates. They are our colleagues. They can be our relatives. can be our cousins. Nothing strange about it. But the moment anybody or anything is in your life that takes attention and recognition away from your husband, it becomes a fight. Now, at that moment, it is not jealousy. It is something that God put inside the man. Let me give you an example. A man walks into his house and people are watching television, maybe your cousin or just a genuine cousin or even just your pastor, a man of God, came to visit. And the two of you are, were really fellowshipping. The children were there. It was a meeting and he walks in. And there was no that recognition that someone has walked in that we need to stop everything and receive him and recognize his place and if possible as the woman leave where you are follow him upstairs and say welcome daddy is everything okay you are back i'm having so and so here we were doing this one or two three things uh would you want to have anything is there anything i can do for you he may not have had a problem but if you didn't do that it can erupt into a problem with time not because he loves to create problems. It is an anointing within a man. <laughs> then, at that point, the man can tell you, I'm fine, I'm okay. If you guys are having the meeting, go on. I have something to do here. I think by the time I'm done, even you guys will be done. Please, feel free to go ahead. You are safe. He may not have had a problem with you. But that act, he came in. Went up. You stayed there. You made stories. By the time he came down, you had even left to escort them. You may come back and open the door and meet a face that is different from the face that you met in the morning. And there's nothing, there's no, there's no woman, if you are stupid, you'll begin to say, hey, I suspect maybe there's someone you are talking to. No, he talked to nobody. You scratched the lion in the man. So if you are dating any man that has foolish humility, you are in trouble. Men can be humble, but there must be that understandable level of recognition. It's an authority. It is the tendency of a leader that God put in them. What did God say? And, you are, and the man shall rule. That word is mashal in the Hebrew. And that word means to have dominion. The man shall rule. The man shall have a say that cannot be challenged on how things are going to run. You listen to him talk and say, okay, daddy, I was thinking, suppose we did it like this. You know, if you know your place as a woman, if you are a woman who knows her place, you will raise your point in a way it will be considered. 
But if you are a, an empowered woman that the man begins to talk, you have academic proofs as he's still talking. He's saying, wait, 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 look, look li listen, listen. What I'm, I'm talking from the standpoint of a qualified architect, not you who is talking without experience. Yes. You are talking, you could even be an architect yourself. You know how the, how the man is going to pick it? Because you are an architect, or because you are a medical doctor, or because you are now disrespectable, you are a honorable, he is now nothing. There is nothing you can do, no matter how born again a man is, there is nothing you can do for him to change from thinking like that. Why? The way you confronted the thing, the main issue may not be the building project you are discussing. The main issue is, you have now insulted leadership. You have now picked a problem. You've picked trouble with authority. You have now challenged something that God put there. It is, it is, it is something that God banked there. It is not that that is how men are. It is something God put there. There is nothing you can do to a woman to change the desire to get married. Even a cripple. Don't think because she's crippled. She has no dreams of being married. Don't think because she's epileptic, she has burns all over. She has no dreams of getting married. God put it there. And for a man, if you go to the Mara, there are so many baboons there. And there's something with a baboon. A baboon has respect for a man, even if he's the size of Idahosa. You can send Idahosa to the shop to buy bread. He'll come back with bread. Baboons will clear the way. And he'll walk with bread and bring it home. Send a woman, even if, if she's the minister of whatever. Send a woman for bread in the Mara. Even if she's Condoleezza Rice. Even if she's Hillary Clinton. Even if it is Michelle Obama. Send her for bread. Baboons will take it from her. Why? Because she's a woman. Baboons know that. You as a woman, you are still challenging that. You know what an animal can agree with? Agree with it. I've never seen anything as stupid as animals. I was driving the other day in a ngombe, a place where we were driving at 150. Ngo, ngombe in a cross kama in a tembea. In a tembea. The, the cow has no brain. He's saying, if you want to break, break. If you want to hit me, hit me. It is, it is walking. Even a madman crosses the road while running. A cow crosses the road while walking. For an animal to recognize the authority of a man. Who are you as a woman to challenge it? You can go to Beijing. You can do resolutions. You can do women empowerment. You can't change what God put in a place. You can't. It is there. And it is there when they are still children. They are still boys. When they are growing up. That ego is there. You need to see the way Idahosa challenges Hadassah. But he doesn't do. When Joshua comes to take him. He may riot. But it is considerable. But when it is Hadassah. The man will lie down. The man will bite. Because a woman cannot insult my authority. And I stand watching. You are playing. It is something about a man. That God put there. So if you are dating a man. And you cannot see these things in him. Run for your life. A man who is in his right senses. Let me, I'm sharing with you. What, what, okay. Identity crisis. Eh? You have seen men who are like women. Please. So naturally, a woman is wired to be under authority. You know why? Women can do strange things without authority. Women are powerful. You can imagine the trouble we are in today in this world. It is not the man that was deceived. It is the woman. You want to ask me how many people have come back? Pombe, siasa, na wanawake. The three enemies of the anointing. Gold, glory, girls. Why must a woman come somewhere? Did you see gold, men, and something else? Is gold, girls? The way women can treat you when you have authority. I slept somewhere and woke up in the morning. And... I don't know what happened already. They were saying, you know, we have just come because to Mesikia unasimama. Nika sema nani ya mesema unasimama. Nini mesema kutoka wapi. 
So I, I still couldn't understand what they were saying. The guys I was with were wondering what are they talking about. <laughs> Women can put in you to start thinking of even what you have never thought you can do. <laughs> so if you are stupid, you look at yourself, you say, so I now look like I'm a Wow. <laughs> wow. Then you give an offering to us that. They say when a woman suggests it, it can be done. That's why my sister, one thing you should know, even if you are a choir type, you should know you are too powerful to be married by a powerless man. To surrender your destiny to a powerless man, and power does not mean money and politics. Power means a man who understands what a man was born to be. To surrender your life, as powerful as you are, to a, it is very easy for women to take over as both the mother and the father. You have seen it. But you have never seen a man who has taken over as both the husband and the mother. Men rarely take over as mothers. One in a million. And the one that takes over as a mother, you must find something is not right with this. Oh, oh, medulo blangata. <laughs> so, but it is very easy for a woman to look at a man and say, stupid man. So this one is, this is how I'm going to live. And immediately adjust and become the mother and the father. And the man is alive. But it's difficult to find a man who is acting the husband and the, and the mother and the woman is still alive. Because it is, it is something about a man. Women can put you in trouble. It will take you a life to come out of. All the battles that David was going through in his life, running from cave to cave, mountain to mountain, place to place. Do you know who put David on those battles? The Bible says, and the women sang after David killed Goliath. And men did not say anything. <laughs> and the women sang. Saul has killed a thousand, but David, ten thousand. Saul said, if women have seen it, this boy must die. If a man said it, Saul would have not had a problem. So the problems of David began with a woman. Women sang. When women begin to sing your praises, realize your stand. Women have never praised a man for nothing. You just keep answering on Facebook, thanks my dear, thanks my dear. And it is the women talking. Say thanks my dear, thanks my dear. Every thank you you are answering, one day you will be accountable. The patience a woman has is not like the patience of a man. You are spoiling this thing, my friend. It's not like the patience of a man. It is put there by God. <laughs> so, because of that level of power and authority, as a sister, when you are dating a man, you must be very, very careful with the tendencies of a woman. Because it takes power to keep power. And to take care of power. You are, naturally, you must know that. There is a level of expression a woman would want because women are powerful beings. And so it will take a man being a certain way to be able to calm down that. And to be able to help her fulfill her destiny. If not, you're seeing a man who is behaving like a woman. Get ready for trouble. And so, as a result, God expects them to be subject to men. You know what it means to be subject? To be under authority. To be under authority. Please give me First Corinthians chapter 11 verse number 3. So you'll ask questions like, how is the brother's authority level? Do I sense authority? You'll be shocked that sometimes a woman will celebrate it because a man said no. You'll be shocked it disturbs a, man, a woman to have a man who is always saying yes, 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 yes. It disturbs a woman. Because they are created by God to be under authority. And when the man is not providing that authority, a woman can start doing very weird things. There are women who go out of control 
because they had no one to control them. Because naturally, God knew who you are and God designed it that you be under authority.